What is up? What is up? It's your boy Vision for Life. I'm back with another Madden 21 reaction. This is a off the gameplay deep dive stream. Just ended. Uh, looking at the gridiron notes. If you haven't tried out the gridiron notes, I'm going to be providing the link below, and you'll be able to go and read them for yourself. But a lot of good things in that gameplay stream. Uh, definitely came out better than I was anticipating. And let's get into the juice of what we can see here. Uh, we started off with the run defense. Obviously, if you play Madden 20 at any point, you know the run was very powerful. Not so much, uh, well, a little bit in regs, but definitely a lot more in balance in mud. So one of the big focal points was what was 21 going to do to curve this? I mean, you had the last person who, who won the last major EA Madden tournament joke without throwing one pass. So obviously, <laughs> that's kind of that's kind of like grounds for concern. So as you can see here, run defense. Uh, pretty much saying what I just told you, but now force defenders align on the line of scrimmage at the snap will use wider angles at the start of the play to show more anticipation and better pursuit prediction to set the edge versus outside running plays. So what this is trying to say is, you know, in Madden 20, your edge defenders, so that is if you were using a uh, 4 free team, your, your, your right ends, your left end, if you're using a uh, free 4 team, the outside linebackers, they would pretty much in Madden 20 kind of get jumbled up with the O line and held up and wouldn't be able to get a good release to stop the outside runs, which you will probably uh, recognize uh, if you think about all the times you've probably stopped outside runs in Madden 20, they more than likely were done with your Mike linebacker, your weak side linebacker, or any of the linebackers that weren't uh, setting the edge or maybe you got a safety come up. This change is now allowing it so that uh, the force defenders in the play will actually be able to go out and stop the running back so that they can't get that good outside release. So if this works the way it's intended, you should definitely see a <laughs> decrease in outside play success. But obviously, until we get some more gameplay footage from hand, we won't know the exact uh, cause of it. The next thing is force defenders will show more anticipation in their pursuit angles at the start of the play when facing quick hitting outside running plays such as jet sweep and touch pass so that they'll get in better positions to set the edge. This is basically saying um, when you call those plays like the jet sweeps or you know any of those weird gadget plays where you have uh, Tyreek Hill or you know one of those fast people kind of uh, handling the ball or running with it it's going to make defenders now react more with predictions to get to where uh, those uh, ball carriers are this is a big thing I would know I encountered you know once in a while like Zeke in the Wildcat a quarterback or Tyreek Hill in the Wildcat a quarterback um, this is gonna be something to kind of make it so the computer doesn't just get uh, held up by the O-line and, and that ball carrier has pretty much an open lane to the outside that they can then use to cut out then turn up for a touchdown hammer and fill players who are the defenders in the run fit responsible for the open gaps inside the force player will take wider initial pursuit angles versus outside running plays that will help them get over the top towards the outside of formation quicker and prevent them from getting mirrored up by inside blockers and other traffic i mean honestly it's pretty much telling you that <laughs> they really put a lot of work into getting the run stop and you know those role players are really going to act like that role and actually help you out more with getting uh, the run game more contained uh force defenders level wider formation Alignments in many base defensive formations such as the free four and more plays within these base formations will have the force player aligned on the line of scrimmage instead of off the ball. So pretty much putting those players on that actual line of scrimmage uh, waiting to uh, attack the ball carrier rather than having to uh, be a little bit further off and then having to come up and a blocker's already meeting them pretty much taking them out the game. Edge and force defenders will have a wider gap integrity versus heavy wing tight end sets very important note here this is basically saying that um if you come out in like uh you know heavy o linemen heavy heavy tight ends blocking play the defenders will recognize that and will have a better gap integrity one of the things that i would do a lot is try and make it so that my 
six O linemen or you know big tight ends could get me better run blocking because I knew that we could kind of overpower them, especially if it came out in like a mismatch set like the quarter or or dime one four six sometimes. This is making it so like even if you do come out with that, your edge defenders will recognize it and will try to get around. Now it doesn't necessarily mean the devil's tactics won't work, especially if you're coming out in quarter or you know dime like I said earlier, but it does provide a bigger awareness so that you actually have a chance now when, when that happens. New improved blocking interactions with defenders disrupting running lanes by pushing blockers further into the backfield during engagement versus all run types. Great, great, great change if it comes if, if it works out it does. What this is saying is like if you are running towards the side of someone who who your O lineman is overmatched by that defender, it will push them into the backfield, which will basically affect your run. You'll have to you know cut earlier, which put put you in position to be tackled by someone else. It basically makes your path to success be hindered, which you know obviously in Madden 20 that didn't happen a lot with the run. So now that they're focusing back on that, great to see. Uh, defenders will have better anticipation off of the ball carrier's movement by taking smarter angles while or after shedding blocks. This is basically coming down to pursuit angles. No need to really go into pursuit angles in Madden 20. <laughs> I think everyone uh, is aware, or well aware of how they weren't that great. Um, so hopefully this right here kind of gives the hope that pursuit angles will be respected a little bit more. And then we're going to go into tackling improvements. Um, one of the big things for Madden 21 is uh, breakdown tackling has improved. You just see this um, put into more effort with your AI controlled um, defenders. Obviously, a lot of people uh, higher up like to do their own tackling, but this is letting you know that at least if you don't do your own tackling, the AI won't be completely useless because sometimes, let's face it, you can't be every player in the field. Uh, defenders will now be much more aware when they are engaged in blocks near a ball carrier and they will trigger tackle attempts from these engaged blocks inside the trenches and in open field versus impact blocks. Just letting you know that if you're being held in the block, the players are going to make more of an effort to get out and actually tackle the player. I think in Madden 20, a lot of times when it comes to uh, you know blocks, open field blocks, it was more either the defender completely has them wrapped up, they can't do anything, or uh, the person who's doing the block just gets beat. So I think this is trying to say now you'll be able to see uh, less of a disparity. You'll see defenders trying to actually get you outside their block and not just, you know, the simple win or no win. That's what I'm hoping it comes out to be at least, but you know, obviously we have to wait for the game to drop or at least the beta open before we can see anything. Um, hit sticks, dive tackles have been turned, tuned to make them more accessible and functional, all of which come together with our new breakdown tackles for a more intuitive defensive experience. Once again, that's something where you kinda, you can't really see uh, the proof in the pudding until you play the game, but I'm assuming what this is saying is that hit sticks and dive tackles are just going to look a little bit better I know a lot of times with the hit sticks or, or, or even the dive tackles it would come off to where you're, you're running behind someone you dive tackle you just fall into the dirt like nothing can be done happens you know happen to quite a bit <laughs> hit sticks too you sometimes would get to be able to trigger hit stick in a situation that didn't really make sense so hopefully this kind of uh, aligns it so now that it'll see a more proper way or proper animation for those rather than just coming out of nowhere or not knowing why it happened um, location based tackle this goes back to what I was saying earlier with the tackle breakdown uh, defenders and your offensive players will now be more aware of where they're at on the field. Um, pretty much these tackling interactions make our players more aware of the field location and react accordingly including the pylon, goal line, sideline, and first down marker. While there's not a direct button input on the six for these tackles, they will be driven by player ratings and superstar abilities. In addition to the abilities, the defenders tackle and awareness ratings compared to the ball carrier's vision and awareness ratings will drive the outcome of these interactions dynamically. So, important keynote of here, you don't have to hit a button for this to work, it's just going to happen automatically. So, for those who, and I had those concerns too, thought that maybe I had to hit X and it would trigger it or, or, it, or hit like any, you know, click right stick down. It's not going to be the case, it happens organically, it looks like it takes these ratings that, you know, I don't think a lot of people always put a lot of stock in, such as bar carrier vision and of course awareness and 
makes those come into play. Now, this is big for a couple reasons. Obviously, if you're using the starting running back of your team, they probably have a fairly decent awareness. But if you are one of the people who like, I like to play with speed, and you put in, you know, a uh, random jabroni guy who has 96 speed but low awareness, this is pretty much saying that they m will probably not be able to um, make those attempts to try and reach a first down marker or even have the ability to because they're probably going against someone who has a higher tackler and awareness rating so I definitely think it's going to make you have to think twice on those clutch runs of who you put in I think a lot of time Madden has kind of defaulted to I'm gonna put the fastest guy in there and just make it happen I think this will kind of make you have to think about okay maybe I should pry and put in a Derrick Henry who I know will be able to beat uh, players and could take a pound them before going down me I always love power backs power backs are always my favorite back in Madden I am not really a big speed guy this really helps me out because it just fits into what I always, I always like to do already is use the most aware halfback on a team and try and make a play so I love that this is a, a feature for Madden NFL 21 and I really do think it's going to be impressive to see especially on any streams or any gameplay you watch that's because now you have that extra element Element of um, ball carriers reaching out and trying to make that play and trying to make um, that that extra push for the first down I think it's gonna be very interesting to see how the defenders will stop it like are they going to like move the hand back or give a more extra push to push them back I don't know but I, I do know it'll be very interesting to see those fourth down or fourth and inches plays and kind of see how it looks like when a defender wins those um, opportunities Zone drop coach adjustment. They're introducing a new set of coach adjustments that will allow you as a defensive player to customize the depth of your zone drops for underneath zone defenders. These coaching adjustments will give you the ability to change the drop depths of flat hook and curl flat zones in increments of five yards up to a max of 30 yards from the line of scrimmage. When using these adjustments, keep in mind that all match zone logic will be disabled in all zone coverage plays while using the adjustments, including the deep zone players. When facing a no huddle offense, you can turn off the coaching adjustments by using the reset and uh, sorry using the reset play option in the pre-play adjustments menu who that is a big game changer in the Madden meta um, to keep it short short easy and simple you can now choose how far back or how up close your zone drops um, to give you perspective, I think a route that we all saw last year in Madden 20 was the corner route. Um, obviously, you know, if you're trying to defend the corner route, you're thinking probably the purple zone. The problem with the purple zone is sometimes, well, sometimes I guess say in, in the stock coverage, the purple zone would be a little bit too far up from that sideline and not far enough back. This right here gives you the ability to pretty much say, hey, when uh, you come out of your zone, I want you this far back. So if you know someone isn't making adjustments or doesn't know where the zone drop is going to be, obviously, they throw that corner out. Your corner is right there from the zone assignment or, you know, whoever you have for corner safety to basically make a play. Now, this is going to be something that you only see like the hardcore players use. I think a lot of people who don't want to mess with their settings or don't want that ability to, you know, take the defenders out of that coverage won't mess with this. But this is a great great feature to have the ability to let your corners know how deep or how um, uh, how underneath they should um, play their zone is going to change up the game greatly now if you already know that formation uh, where that player always has this particular play and it always goes to this person you can now use that um, information to basically trap them because now your defender is going to be able to play the zone area much closer and much offered than, than, than stock so it changes up a lot um obviously i think um this is going to really be more handy in the higher levels of competitive madden but i think this is going to be something where you have to experiment experiment with because obviously you know if you can find that perfect ratio that perfect balance you really are taking away a lot of plays and 
what I like about this a lot is it's trying to give zone a, a, a boost now there's usually people who are you know they like man more they like zone more this is trying to give zone a weapon because a lot of people felt last year man coverage was a little bit overpowered in some cases this is kind of doing something to kind of give the zone a little bit more power as well uh, me personally I play a lot of zones so this is gonna be something I have to definitely look into um, something that you're definitely going to have to explore with you're probably gonna get beat a couple times by the computer or practice mode or if you're like me and you do all the stuff in, in a real game you probably can give up some touchdowns or some some big yardage but once you have that mastered it's going to be a phenomenal resource and trust me a lot of people are excited about this just uh, this addition because it really will in the right hands change the way defense zone plays at least then we go on to our QB and passing improvements um, Throwing out sacks, all QBs will have the ability to throw the ball while being tackled. The accuracy and power of the pass are dictated largely by physics. The further into the passing animation the QB is at the point of contact, the more likely the pass will be accurate. However, if at any point the QB's arm or shoulder are hit during the pass, that too can impact the accuracy. Throwing out sacks does carry some risks as well. The earlier in the throwing animation the QB is hit in combination with the QB's strength rating, the more likely he will be to fumble. A lot to digest in that statement. Um, as you may be aware, uh, Madden 20 had an ability where you actually had uh, the capability of actually throwing out sacks. Uh, it seems like that's not going to be the case now and all quarterbacks have the ability to do it, which is good. Uh, one thing I hated with Madden 20 was when I was trying to throw to a wide receiver and my quarterback would essentially freeze up or not get the ball out and just get the sack. This is now saying that you know when you hit that button, the quarterback will make an attempt and based on how they're hit and their, uh, it looks like their uh, thrown under pressure rating and QB strength, it'll determine what happens to the ball, which I'm perfectly fine with. I'd rather have the you know, I'd rather throw up a duck that goes to the sideline than nothing happen at all. My quarterback just gets sacked. Um, I think this is going to be very interesting to see how well the physics play into it. So, you know, obviously if I get hit from my right side and I'm throwing to my, my left side, how is that going to impact the ball? the ball versus if I get on my other side. I want to be able to see how exactly that is going to play. I think another thing that also has to come into this is obviously if you do it early to try to, you know, if you do it quick to try and avoid the pass rusher and your quarterback doesn't have a lot of strength, how does the fumbles work? Like, is it going to, you know, fumble backwards? Are we talking tuck rule? You know, something I definitely want to see and play around more. But overall, I think it's a great change. You know, I do think uh, all quarterbacks should have the ability to throw out sacks because a lot of, I think every quarterback in the league has thrown out of a sack or thrown while, you know, being hit or, or falling down. So that's something that's like a prerequisite it for the position deep passes under pressure new to Madden 21 are under pressure thrown animations which allow QBs to contextually speed up their throwing motions while feeling pressure on deep passes throws of 40 or more yards from the spot of the pass to the landing spot these animations are dictated by threat to impact prediction meaning that at the time the pass has been initiated if the QB thinks he will get hit by an oncoming defender before the release of the pass he'll use an under pressure animation and then the QB's throw under pressure rating will modify both the power and the accuracy of the pass this is pretty much saying if you're going deep and the pass rush is coming the quarterback will speed up their delivery and based on the two uh, traits which is um, your throw under pressure and your let me see Okay, so sorry, it looks like it's throwing the pressure and I'm guessing the uh, the threat to impact prediction, which I'm assuming is gonna probably be tied to awareness, but if you're a user player or I guess if you're using the if you're if you're the user that might not be a big thing, but it's more of the QB's throw. I think So what this means is that the quarterback now will use their throw under pressure rating to see the power of the ball and accuracy of the ball as it comes out the big thing with this one is now that you have the ability to get the ball out quicker it is going to turn under pressure waiting to see if it's actually a catchable ball this kind of dials back to the sack um sack cover or sack tip i said earlier where you have to think now 
if you have a quarterback who doesn't necessarily have a big throwing power or doesn't have a good throw under pressure rating, it might be an ugly duck. But I think a lot of players are going to respect like at least getting the ball out somewhat than just being balled up for a sack. Um, QB branch outs. QBs can now quickly branch out of the drop back to throw the ball at any given time. As soon as the QB has received a snap, if a receiver button input is given, the QB will immediately branch out of existing behavior and throw the ball to the intended receiver, which also includes branching out of play action fakes. QBs will now have a more uh, will now have more control to branch out of the drop back to scramble by moving the stick towards either a 45 degree angle away from the line of scrimmage while also re-enabling the controlled rollout movement which you can toggle by tapping the right trigger slash r2 button along with this change qb or quick throw and accurate from that 20 has been turned off a lot of people did not like quick throw and accurate they did not like it um i never really had a problem with it but once again the type of heat I face is probably different than what people face in MUT or competitive, or sorry, those pro tournaments. Um, essentially, what this is saying is now if I hit hike and I see B's immediately open, I can throw the ball. I don't have to wait for my QB to finish his drop back or, you know, um, to be put in a certain position. You can now just throw it. Uh, that's always a good thing because you know sometimes someone plays something out of position you see someone wide open and you can't get the ball out because boom you know it takes too long to throw or you get instant sack so this is going to help with that regards uh the fact that they turned off quick throw and accurate now means if you see that quick throw you don't have to worry that because pressure is in your face it's gonna you know be uh <laughs> be a bad ball um i think one important note thing though here too is that you can actually now roll out. So if you do see that end or that DT coming, you can now roll out using the left stick to pretty much buy you some time and hopefully be able to get the ball out. So I think the big takeaway from this is that QBs are no longer locked into that drop back animation. You know, before we used to have the right trigger to cancel play action, but we didn't really have anything to, to cancel drop backs. So this now makes it more of a natural uh, progression because now you can just immediately throw the ball or turn any drop back into a rollout. Accuracy power tuning with the variety of improvements done in the past and we also did some tuning to improve under pressure and cross body passing accuracy to bring more balance for both making the inaccurate penalties more contextually appropriate to the situation. I'm assuming what this is saying is that if you're drawn under pressure or you're throwing cross body, your accuracy will now be appropriately penalized. Um, let's let's keep it honest. Most people who do this are using the Pat Mahomes or the uh, Lamar. <laughs> so you're really not going to uh, see those guys take much of a big penalty because that's their bread and butter. But it's good to know that if I'm using someone who really has no business throwing under pressure or throwing cross body, that I'm able to see those accuracies uh, take a appropriate dip. Um, this one's interesting, they've added a new max distance passing power penalty which will activate when targeting a receiver who is deeper than the QB's max passing distance. The max passing distance for each QB is dictated by his throw power rating. This penalty also decreases the strength of the pass when throwing deep passes on the run with more severe penalties to throw power for cross body throws. So, big, big takeaway of this, if your QB does not have a strong arm and you throw to someone who's outside that range. The pass is going to suck. <laughs> um, before in Madden 20, it would pretty much be one of those things where if you threw deep to someone who didn't have the arm, it would get there, but it would be slow, would leave a lot of time for the cornerback or defender to catch up and make a play. This is just adding more of a penalty to it to where now if I'm running around in the back of Ryan Fitzpatrick, I can't do like an 80-yard miracle Hail Mary play. Um, it, <laughs> it pretty much prevents that from being a thing and also gives you much stricter penalties if you're running around and you're doing cross body throws. I think this is great. Once again, only quarterbacks with really high throwing power like the Josh Allens or the Patrick Mahomes will be the ones who can kind of get beyond this, but it brings back home all the quarterbacks who necessarily, you know, they, they're probably they're, they're good throwers of the ball, but they don't have that arm strength anymore. It doesn't let you just throw it wherever you want. It has a penalty um, to now occupy it, especially when doing crossbody or under pressure. 
I'm always one for trying to make quarterbacks throw under realistic means. This sounds like a realistic thing, and I'm interested to see how it plays out, but I'm, I'm excited for it. Enhance the in-game passing feedback text so that players will now have a more transparent understanding about the result of each type of throw. You saw Madden 20, you saw underneath quick throw and accurate, pressure and accurate. They're just enhancing it so that it is more, uh, it's easily seen. So, good thing. Parity for handoff animations. All handoff animations have been tuned so that all respective handoffs are the same speed going either direction. Small little thing here. Um, the guy that <clears throat> the guy <clears throat> small little thing here the guy that won the Madden tournament he is key to success was he would use a left-handed or a left-handed punter and the quarterback was right-handed and whichever way he wanted to run the ball <clears throat> that's who he would put at quarterback so this is just their way of now making it so that if you do that strategy you don't get a faster handoff animation because the way it worked in Madden 20 was if you're left-handed and you hand the ball off to the left you get a little speed boost same with the right side this is just bringing it back to balance once again that would be something I would have never thought about doing but it's, it's good to see that they're uh, taking that into account Past interference and illegal contact. We've added support for more robust management of user control past interference and for the first time the illegal contact penalty. The goal with these is preventing users from intentionally obstructing receivers from getting to their routes and or catch spot while trying to overlook incidental and unintentional contact. These penalties can these penalties will be used in both competitive and simulation game styles and will be called primarily on user control defenders. For franchise players, these penalties can be adjusted by practice setting menus this is basically preventing you from calling picks I've called a couple of unintentional picks where it's like you know I got in front of the receiver and stopped him it was a no call but I kind of know what I did this is just curbing that um, it's one of those things where it's going to work both ways when it happens when it gets called on you it's going to suck but it'll probably get called on an opponent in a game in the game you're in where you need it and you'll be like oh my god it's the greatest thing ever my take it's a good feature to have in it it sucks that you can kind of manipulate the ai and stop them from getting to their route with just a little contact this is making it so that's no longer something you can uh think about as viable so i'm with it defensive contain balancing a lot of people would do contain blitz and mana 20 and they pretty much felt that it was more beneficial to have your edge rusher set to contain because it would react quicker to scrambling quarterbacks. This is their way of now making it so that if you use contain, they don't react as quick. Um, when utilizing pass rush schemes that free up the contain player from being blocked via an overload to either side, that player will now rush the QB at a slower speed than if he were not in the contain assignment. As long as the QB is inside the pocket and not using the scramble movement, the contain player will be moving at a speed slow enough to read the QB with the intent to keep him in the pocket, but will not break into a full speed rush unless the quarterback starts to scramble. This change will bring balance by giving the defense the ability to quickly react to a scrambling QB with an unblocked contain player while giving up a little power in the pass rush. This is pretty much saying they're trying to rebalance contain to work how it should. Um, I didn't know in Madden 20 if you were going against a contain player and you even sniff to like one direction, they get off there and immediately on you. This is toning that down to where now if you're in contained and the quarterback isn't um, immediately scrambling, they're taking a wider, slower angle. Um, they won't do anything or get proactive until they see the quarterback running. It makes that meta have to be rethinked in abilities to do it um, and it does make it to where if you do call contain you're really not going to get much of a pass rush as it should be so cleans that mode up or sorry cleans that up a lot I I like the change you know I, I never relied on contain that much to be honest with you but I did know there was something you could do to like hold a contain person in check so I do like that this one kind of brings them out wider because now um, you can essentially use the running back to chip the contain player I, I forgot what the tattoo was but something along those lines but I'm, I'm excited for it I think it's a good change 
catching responsiveness um, pretty much what this is saying is players can now dictate the direction they want their catch to take them as they secure the catch via the left stick input for example when holding up or vertical on the left stick and using the possession catch you'll be selecting a possession catch that will fall in the same direction as your stick input ensuring the receiver won't go for a ground short of the sticks this increase in control is also critical when throwing underneath routes as the responsiveness allows receivers to quickly turn up the field after using a rat catch one obvious case to notice this improvement is when a receiver is nearing the sidelines the user will have to will have control to keep him in bounds as he turns up the field rather than run out of bounds this lets you figure out uh, which direction you will be after you make the catch. Uh, Madden before, you really couldn't have much feedback in this. If you threw to the sidelines, you had to possession catch it because if you tried to, you know, make them go the other way, it wouldn't work. Or if you don't possession catch it, they would go out of bounds. This is just giving you the ability to now dictate where your wide receiver, whoever you, or where your receiver will now be going when the ball is thrown to them. Big change needed change you know it's gonna be interesting to see um how far it goes like do higher awareness receivers have a better chance of staying in bounds if you throw it to the sidelines to go up or does everyone have equal footing but overall it's a great change um definitely something that was needed it sucks when you try and go for that quick drag on a on a third down or fourth down and your receiver falls short of sticks using this you can now make it so that when you do go for that drag you can say hey try and stay where you're at stay above that line i don't want you to come back to the ball so i like the change i think it's definitely something that was needed player personnel based packaging um for play for these players i had to get creative with their uh, formation personnel on offense we've added a new way to use packages and formation subs while using audibles the pre-play audible system now considers the actual personnel on the field when changing your personnel on the play call menu either via packages or formation subs your pre-play audibles will now match the personnel package on the field for instance if you're using a 12 personnel one running back two tight ends and a formation like gun empty flex you will be able to audible to any other formation in your playbook that also uses 12 personnel for now this is a feature only applies to offense but as we continue to evolve we're looking for opportunities to expand on it in a nutshell if you come out in like a spread formation where you have two tight ends um, one in the slide and you know one in the tight end position and then you know a receiver you can now audible to any other formation that has that exact same personnel um, one thing I've seen people highlight is um, kind of like the 2012 pages offense where they had two tight ends Hernandez and, and Gronk and they would basically split them out wide put them in tight end packaging all while doing no huddles this lets you do it um, it's gonna be one of those things where you it's definitely a welcome change. It's going to be very interesting to see what's done with it. I myself don't necessarily use that offensive style much, but I'm pretty sure it'll come in the handy uh, just to be able to have more run heavy formations with having two tight ends on the field. But it's a good change, and I think it's going to really allow some creativeness to get sprinkled in. Um, I'm eager to see what people do with it when they're able to get their hands on it. Balance for repeated audible slash play, flip, slash play flips and prepay. I'm not going to really read this one. Here's the gist of it. If you uh, flip your play more than two times on the third, third time or higher, your offensive lineman has a better chance to do a false start. Um, you really don't see flip play a lot in online regs, but I know in Mutt and at the pro level it was done a lot to try and get the computer off balance and try and get the look coverage you want. Obviously, you know, if you're watching a tournament, seeing that repeatedly is going to be a eyesore. So what they did to try and make it more authentic is if you're flipping the play so much, your O-liners are going to confuse and do a, a false start. I like it. <laughs> I mean, once again, it I don't it's not going to benefit me. Because I don't really play people that do this, but it's good to know that if you if this is abused, there is a downfall to it. I know that it was something done in the Madden 20 Pro community a lot, so I'm with it. You know, you shouldn't have to flip a play that many times to try and get an advantage over the computer. Player fatigue for out of position ball carriers. 
Madden 20 was the year of the gadget play for many, but players told us that gadget plays were too frequently relied on as the primary source of consistent offense. In response, you'll now have to strategically manage the workload for ball carriers who are not a primary running back or risk penalties to their ratings via fatigue for overuse. After a player who is not a running back by trade, such as QB, wide receiver, tight end, has carried the ball as the primary ball carry on multiple consecutive plays, that player will start to quickly deplete his stamina, especially on tackles and hit sticks. This risk applies to non-running backs in plays like Wildcat Power, Jet Sweep Pass, and QB Blast. And as they get tired, you'll notice them become less effective on the field regardless of their role thereafter. These players will need to be subbed out the game of overuse. If not subbed out, their play will continue to degrade as they get more tired. The system will be used on both competitive and simulation game styles. With this change, a significant reduction of fumbles by scrambling QBs on all game styles except for all Madden competitive. However, as players start to get more fatigued, the likelihood of fumbling will increase. This is basically saying, if you're using a Lamar Jackson, a Tyreek Hill as your primary ball carrier in your Wildcat plays, your Jet Sweep Pass plays, your QB Blast, they're going to get fatigued. And as they get fatigued, their play will deteriorate. They won't be as effective. I'm assuming they won't be as fast. They're more susceptible to big hits that could potentially cause fumbles based on how much they were used. So a lot of people did not like that. One of the things that Madden 20 did was if you didn't wrap up or slide with a quarterback, you would fumble the ball. I thought it was a fair fair trade-off because it's really easy to slide. Really easy. Even easier to run out of bounds. Fumbling was only something that happened to people who got greedy. People complain. You know, last year was Lamar's takeoff and he was the poster boy. Oh, Lamar fumbles too much. They just breathed on him. They just tackled me fumble. So this is their way of kind of giving and taking. So what they're trying to say is, okay, if you run the QB blast or you run repeatedly with these, you know, you know, these you run people with Lamar because he's a quarterback and you're and that's his main thing, you're gonna have a faster stamina hit. Uh, back in the Madden days, or back in the old days, they'd say your stamina could get so low to the point where your your guy turns into like a uh, a white, <laughs> a white little tile. And when you were white, that just meant you were gas. Um, it's gonna be very interesting to see how far this will go. I am all for if you're trading fumbles for now the quarterbacks get gas and they can't run and there's a moment where they're just on the field like just huffing and puffing and looking slow. If that's what this is gonna bring, I'm all for it. You know, if it, if it means I'm trading in fumbles for having times where my where the, the primary ball carrier just can't move because he's so tanked, I'm with it because the thing about it is too you know usually for those type of plays you have that one play you designate for it it really isn't a backup player for it you know if, if Tyreek Hill is injured on the chief you would you could put in Martin you know McKee Hardman but he's not gonna be as much of a home run front as Tyreek Hill so it is gonna have to actually force you to actually account for player fatigue and sub them out if needed um, I think the biggest thing with this will be, you know, if you do that Wildcat play and Lamar's tired, you now have to back him out and put an RG3 for what may be a big third down or fourth down. Do you really want to trust RG3 with that? You know, I'm a big, big proponent of injuries in competitive series and competitive games just because it teaches players to not be stupid. This is sort of giving us a little something to help make players not play stupid. So I like it. Um, obviously, I, I hope we do see the effect of them just being gassed on the field. Um, hopefully that does come into play. We'll have to see how the whole fumbling thing goes, but if you're going to make it to be where they're just bum tired on the field and they, they can't even run or can't even do anything because they're so tired, that's a small concession. I can take it. Kicking game to me. Uh, tuning. They received feedback from players that some aspects of the King game were in need of some improvement, so here's a quick list of some changes there. Kick meter on competitive game style has been tuned to be more skill based, meaning it will be more difficult to get accurate kicks for competitive play, and missing the accuracy window will be slightly more punitive. This is saying they made the King game harder, basically. It's more skill based, it'll be easy, it'll be harder to get accurate kicks, and you can actually miss the window now. 
um i'm all for it field goal kicking in madden's an afterthought when they add an ice to kicker it's sort of you know made a little bit harder but obviously that's only on that's only on you know games that are going down to the wire if you look on average in the nfl there's way more missed kicks from just even extra points to field goal and that was something that had to be brought into madden to kind of increase the bar because in madden field goal kicks after dot they're trying to make it so now you have to be you know first and actually get in your field goal kicks because it's not automatic so i'm definitely down with that i've been a big proponent of making kicking harder i just think that it's something that needed to be done um kick power slash win impact has been tuned on simulation game style so that kickers and punters don't always launch unrealistic deep kicks while the win impact on the king game will be less significant that's not really gonna affect me i never really play simulation game style i do remember there being some controversy around that uh man 20 with you know kick powers being unrealistic so i'm glad to see they addressed it you know for that section of the community i'm glad to see your concerns were addressed uh, we tuned ball physics to bring more skid to the balls on kicks bouncing on the turf to make the coffin corner kickoff exploits known as the scrum kick much more difficult to execute um if you've seen the scrum kick and you know how ridiculous it is and how it looks this is a great change um they had to do something to to address it so i'm glad they did hopefully this is a good fix and doesn't lead to any unintended consequences but i'm happy to see that they addressed it um ability improvements so Basically, it's saying that they add abilities to the game in Madden 20, and it was a great feedback, but they felt like there was some, you know, there wasn't a proper balance. So now they're trying to kind of tune it for this uh, Madden 21. So we'll start with the wide receiver route ability balancing. Wide receivers had a number of abilities granting them catching bonuses on specific route types. These abilities were strong and uh, were difficult to use since they require a detailed knowledge of your team's playbook or specific hot routes that might not always be available. In Man 21, we have reworked these abilities to grant their bonuses when the receiver catches the ball in the specific areas of the field regardless of the route they are on. This allows them to accomplish the initial goal of creating receivers that excel at making plays on specific route types while making them much easier to utilize. Essentially, we had like our slant master or uh, curl master in Madden 20. Now they're making it be more into the areas of the field. So more like I'm thinking like DeAndre Hopkins where he had the red zone threat or in the red zone he was money. Um, welcome change. I will have to kind of see more on what exactly it will do. But I do like the whole idea that, oh, you know, Mike Evans is really good on slants and then all these other routes he's like okay at when Mike Evans all around is a great wide receiver. Um, so I'm interested to see how that area thing is going to play. But, you know, casually optimistic. Can't really uh, see how I feel yet uh, about it till I see it in action. But I will say this, you know, most of the people or most wide receivers who are going to get this are probably people that you're going to get the benefit of doubt of. I mean, when DeAndre Hopkins make a, makes a catch or Julio Jones make a catch, you're really not going to do much arguing because it's, it's Julio Jones, DeAndre Hopkins. So it might be a little bit of a mute, a mute point. It'll be interesting to see how people like Chris Godwin, who has some receiving uh, abilities last year, where does he fall into the spectrum? That's more of a, uh, that'll be more of an interesting test to see what he can exactly do. Uh, coverage defender ability balance on the other side of the ball we had the opposite issue with coverage defender abilities in Madden 20 abilities like manned up zone out and universal coverage were essentially one-stop shops it was too easy to pick up one of these abilities on defender and just set it and forget it ultimately we didn't like how easy it was to make a defensive powerhouse with very little ability investment as a solution to this we have split these abilities up into mobile versions that grant their bonuses across specific areas of the field and marrying the new wide receiver abilities new or sorry now coverage defenders will need to specialize and defend in an area of the field rather than being able to cover the whole gridiron additionally universal coverage has been converted into an x-factor ability so the idea of a powerhouse play to whole field defender can still exist you'll just have to earn it via x-factor objectives this really is a shot at mutt because <laughs> on mutt you can get all these corners and give them these abilities and pretty much set them out there and 
let them have it on regs you didn't have that ability <laughs> you know i think uh stefan gilmore was the top corner in the game you have him you know whoever he's covering he's taking them out for the most part at 99 but you know you're not gonna see you know in regs at least two teams with like two corners who have just to shut down so more of a mutt thing but i'm, I'm i like i like it because you know corners excel at different things you know richard sherman you know back in his prime you know shut down corner but he excelled in zone and he definitely excelled in you know areas of the field that were areas of the field so it's good to see that they're trying to kind of bring that uh into matting and i'm for it obviously you got to kind of wait and see with um how it all plays out i am interested in knowing that you know last year man in 20 for corners if they got a pick they got their x factor automatically is that still going to be a thing because if universal coverage is not x factor are you trying to say now if i have a corner who gets a pick universal coverage is activated which you know i wouldn't be against if that was the case but you know you just kind of want to know like is, is that how's it gonna happen um pass lead ability balance the past lead abilities from Madden 20 were fairly polarizing. They allowed you to make some impressive plays and throw receivers open in the best of circumstances, but more often than not, they could result in throwing uncatchable passes that were out of reach of your receivers. In Madden 21, we have removed the increased leading distance of these abilities and instead boost the ball velocity when using the precision passing mechanic on the left stick in combination with the bullet pass. This new benefit greatly reduces the ability for defenders to make a play on the ball when making the correct read and should prove to be a powerful perk for pocket passers. Once again, I didn't really play a lot of mud. I feel like this is going for the mutt crowd <laughs> um you know when i did have to play with quarterbacks for those abilities i never really felt like there was uncatchable passes or it was difficult to handle but i think it you know the increased ball velocity will make pocket passes be a little bit more lethal i think madden 20 kind of shot a lot towards your running quarterback so now with the pass lead ability and increasing the velocity you'll have a better chance to use someone viable that's not necessarily fast like your uh your drew Brees, your tom brady um your matt ryan so that's that's a good change um you want to make sure that all your above average to elite quarterbacks respective especially if they don't have the fast legs if this lets us do it then great change and really want to see it in action um up next they're going to be doing their franchise gridiron on tuesday june 30th i know a lot of people want to know what's up with franchise i don't really play franchise mode that much but i know that community has been saving for any new juicy tidbits so i'll be tuning in to see exactly what that is don't know if i'll make a video about it yet but overall how do you feel about these changes man i i really like them i was really excited when the gameplay stream ended because there was just a lot that was covered that really tackles all the weaknesses that madden 20 had um for me personally i want to see the zone depth how does that work how is that going to change the game up i want to see the location based tackling how is that going to be when you have that crucial fourth and inches or or you know third down stop like are they going to be smart enough to really hold the ball carrier there so we're not going to see no more of those you know just falling forward or all that by you know people who don't deserve to even fall for it i want to definitely see the qb passing improvements and how that all comes about because arguably the position that we're going to be playing most when we're playing the game is the quarterback but a lot of good stuff here a lot of good good stuff here and i'm i'm excited um they did confirm that if you did sign to that link from the first stream on the 16th you will get into the beta so that's good to good to know um but yeah um i'd say one thing that we can't really cover because it's not in the gridiron but they did change the controls for the halfback they've made all the non-elusive um movements beyond the, the face button so like if you're on xbox why is the truck why is truck b spin a stiff arm wow your right stick has now been you know right stick up is hurdle left and right juke right stick down is the new dead leg or hurdle however you want to call it um animation so i don't know how i feel about that truck being on y is going to be interesting <laughs> but uh it's definitely something you have to get used to uh 
definitely want to play around with that and see how that works but outside of that that was pretty much everything i appreciate you guys for watching the video if you like what you see uh, like and subscribe i'll try to drop more of these ratchet videos as more madden gameplay is released and introduced until next time see y'all peace